in nomine Padre, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. So our saint for today is Saint Francis Borgia, uh, born in 1510, died in 1572, and um, kind of a combination of things you don't normally find together. Uh, he was uh, married and had eight children. Uh, he was also a priest and superior general of the Jesuits, a uh, member of the nobility, and also a mystic who reached like the highest levels of, of, uh, of mystical prayer. So quite, quite, quite an array of, of, of uh, combinations there. Um, he was born into a family of uh, high nobility, the Borgia family, uh, and very pious as a young child and wanted to become a monk. Um, this is remarkable because um, I think one of his uncles was Caesar Borgia, which was famous for like murdering people and throwing them in the Tiber and bribing and, you know, doing all kinds of awful things. Uh, meanwhile, all, all the time, I think, uh, let's say, oh, Caesar Borgia, he was the one that uh, Machiavelli wrote The Prince. The Prince, that evil book about how to gain and keep power by all means, any means necessary. That's who he wrote it for, was for, for um, Francis Borgia, one of his relatives. Um, Francis Borgia was also related to Alexander VI, who was famous as being a, one of the worst popes ever due to corruption. So, uh, so this is the family he's born into and very pious, wants to become a monk, but instead due to uh, his nobility and I, all of this, these um, family ties, he was sent to the court of the Holy Roman Emperor to learn how to be a member of the nobility. Uh, he married when he was 19 years old, uh, a good woman of noble estate. As I mentioned, they had eight children. And he was also um, a very good composer of ecclesiastical music, especially of polyphony. And this is before Palestrina had made polyphony what it is today. So he was kind of a precursor in the development of that, uh, that style of music. So, his, um, uh, so he's embarking on this, this uh, uh, you would say, way of life, this vocation as a married man and nobility and so on. But what really made the difference for him is he accompanied, um, he would always go with the emperor on affairs of state all over Europe. And one, once he was given the task of uh, accompanying the body of Queen Isabella of Spain from where he, she had died to her burial place. And we, we know Queen Isabella of Spain, very famous uh, and, and so on. Uh, so it's, um, so he's accompanying this retinue, they're, they're taking the body of the queen and it's, it was always the, the case that when you arrived at the place, they would want to see the body to make sure that it was, it was this, the same one, what, what, what it claimed to be. And so this is, um, Due to the heat, I guess it's the summertime or something like that, um, they, they, they removed the coffin. She had been dead for three days, but had already decomposed significantly. And, um, you know, uh, Francis Borgia, Queen Isabel had been reputed to be very beautiful, and she was during life, but now here in death, he saw this is what happens. Isabella of Spain, the, the famous, beautiful Queen Isabella, and here she is, food for worms, bacteria, right, eating her face. That, that, that's this, like, it really hit him. It really hit uh, Francis Borgia. He was already a good man. It was already praying, but this really drove home to him the emptiness of this life, the emptiness especially of, um, you know, the court and the nobility and high society and wealth. It, he's, it was all worth it, this, worthless. This is what it ends up. It ends up in a coffin decomposing. So that, that had, it was his kind of like, you, you hear about this frequently, saints who have like a conversion, they're living a good way of life, and then they have a second conversion. This is like uh, 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 Francis Borgia's second conversion. It was, it was, it was um, kind of where he wanted totally to give his life for, uh, for Christ. Um, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so his wife, uh, he, he, I, I think he resolved to, he and his wife uh, resolved to live in continence uh, from that point forward. They had already, I think, um, had a number of children, um, but his wife died. His wife died not too many years after that. And so um, uh, Francis Borgia makes adequate preparations for any of his children that were not yet uh, fully grown. And then he renounced his title of nobility and entered the newly founded Jesuit order. Uh, so he began, um, you know, kind of studying for the priesthood specifically, which didn't take very long. He already had the, the um, requisite philosophical and theological education that everybody got those days. So uh, very soon he was ordained a priest uh, for the Jesuits and at once began to, began to live a life of such penance and holiness 
that it was shocking to those who hadn't known him very well. Uh, he had been a, a, such a high no member of the nobility, everybody expected. I mean, nobody could think of themselves living that way, but then here was this um, uh, great member of the, uh, a great member of the nobility living like nobody. Um, it says that he would spend um, hours in prayer each day. He would eat uh, very rough food as opposed to the very dainty food uh, the nobleman ate, uh, wore a hair shirt, used a discipline, uh, slept very little, giving himself to prayer. It would said that he would spend hours each day in prayer, uh, I think occasionally up to eight or ten hours in prayer. Uh, he would uh, beg for food from houses and endured the uh, insults with serenity and patience, volunteered in hospitals to assist the sick and the dying, and spent time cleaning, sweeping, and all the menial tasks of servants. And this, this is somebody who was, who was cons, you know, consorting with kings and queens and so on, and now here he was, lower than a common laborer. So this is what, this is what people could not understand. Um, and, and beside that, he, just, he, lived, uh, uh, he wanted to live a simple and humble life as a priest. He refused any kind of ecclesiastical dignities, um, but it, it was, how could I say this, his efforts were of to no avail, right, to avoid that high society. They just couldn't leave him alone because, um, you know, yes, he, he was willing to live poor and unknown and despised, uh, but his leadership skills, right, his ability as, as a statesman, as a diplomat, were simply too great. And so he, although he would refuse um, any kind of dignities and, and um, you know, offices of honor, uh, he was employed and became the third superior general of the Jesuits. In fact, the greatest after Ignatius of, himself, uh, Ignatius of Loyola himself. Uh, so he would send Jesuits to foreign missions, founded the Gregorian University in Rome, which is, is still continuing, and over 12 colleges throughout Europe, expanded the Jesuit community, and advised kings and prelates in the highest matters of importance. So that's, that's and that's, um, you would say, to those who um, aspire to greatness, you could say, God will call you to it, God. God will call you to it. You don't have to worry about being in this or that menial place if you're, if you're doing God's will. I know this is what God wants of me. I'm going to apply myself to the spiritual life, right? There's no room for negligence or, or carelessness or laziness. Uh, but if God has uh, greater plans in store, then we don't need to worry about when they may or may not happen, right? Just like Francis Borgia. Um, so he would, let's see, um, oh, his life was so inspiring that, that two other men would, would become saints um, uh, in, in admiration after him. So there was St. Pius V who admired and imitated uh, uh, St. Francis Borgia. Yes, Pius V organized the Holy League, made the rosary um, a staple of the church uh, um, uh, devotions, uh, looked up to St. Francis Borgia. Also, another one, uh, St. Charles Borromeo would be inspired by his life. Uh, furthermore, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, would be so, um, uh, uh, was in such admiration of, of Francis Borgia that he resigned the throne, uh, stepped aside from being emperor, and undertook a life of penance. Uh, Francis Borgia is written about by Teresa of Avila, right, that, that um, Carmelite, you know, just the, 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 the second foundress, right, of, of the Carmelites. Um, and she uh, writes in her highest levels of prayer, she mentions the mystical marriage. And that's like, the, that's it. That's like the pinnacle of prayer. You go through all the seven mansions, right? The mystical marriage is the absolute highest. And she says she knows of a very holy person who has such experiences as visions and so on. And she was speaking of Francis Borgia. So she, she writes about him. So he continued uh, his efforts to, uh, at, at every level. Um, and eventually would become uh, sick from his labors. His final mission was traveling to Spain and Portugal to gain cooperation for the Battle of Lepanto at the request of Pius V. And in this he was successful, but the strains of travel proved too, too much for him in his weakened state, and he died in the year 1572 at 61 years of age. So uh, thus the life of St. Francis Borgia, and it's been, he's been called the most striking example of a conversion of life since uh, the saints of the Renaissance. And this is accomplished, how, how did he do this, right? How did he accomplish this life, not just his own life, 
but but we forget that that the people around us they 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 see our example they're affected by us for better or for worse right for good or for ill and we, we heard those saints, uh, uh, the emperor, uh, Charles Borromeo, Pius V, very holy men inspired because of this other holy man. And that's what we can do. We can seek to live our life. Even if, even if like our life amounts to nothing or is like all my efforts seem they're wasted, we just never know who we're inspiring and they go off and, and they do great things because of our example. Uh, but it all started. It was all made possible uh, by con contemplation on death. St. Charles Borromeo looking into that casket, seeing the ravages of death and realizing, having that great moment of God, uh, thus is the way of all flesh. Uh, and it, it's fitting that we think about that, that we think about the horrors of death, that the, the body decomposes, it's, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's disgusting, right? It's just putrid. Um, uh, and because the punishment fits the crime. Death is the result of sin, and it's actually very fitting that a rotting corpse be a sign that this is what sin does to the soul. This is what sin does in the world. When you sin, this is what is happening. That's very fitting for us to meditate upon the correlation between sin and death, uh, and that, that this is a just punishment, and everybody, everybody has to suffer that death. Everybody has to suffer the punishment of sin, and this is where everything ends up. When that's our body, you know, rotting in the ground, how important is going to be, you know, comforts and food and, and pleasure and so on? It's going to be utterly despicable. Uh, and it's that. It's meditations upon those realities, that those spiritual truths that, it, that, that God can work with to provide that grace, right? It wasn't just that meditation that converted Francis Borgia. It was that that meditation put him in a state and put him in a place to where God could convert him, to where God could put all that grace and it, and it would have um, that, that effect that it did. So I would say we, we, we don't often, may not often think of that, but let's think of death. Let's think of our last hour, our last day, and try to endeavor to enter into those dispositions we're going to have at that moment. What do I wish I would have done? What will I, I wish I, I had spent more time doing and, and, and so on? Uh, let us enter into that disposition. It's going to make us uh, uh, that much more ready to receive the grace of God, which will make us that much more of a saint. And then we, we multiply, right? We be fruitful and multiply by our good example. Uh, so let us ask um, St. Francis Borgia uh, for all these graces. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.